Welcome back to Fireside Chats with Dan Becker. Even though we're not having a fire this time because the last time we tried this, we had some technical difficulties. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're talking about seemingly insignificant changes that you'll make to your backpacking gear that will make a really, really big difference to your upcoming backpacking trips. And by big changes, I mean actually very substantial changes to your gear by making these small changes because these are changes that are actually gonna be uh, safer, they're gonna help you find things better, uh, it's just gonna be a better experience overall, it'll help your hiking better. There's just a lot of small changes that are almost completely free. There's only two changes that we're gonna make that could potentially cost you money if you don't already have this stuff there, and we're talking like under $25. Oh, and by the way, I switched to Starbucks because the last time I talked about coffee in a video, everybody made fun of me for drinking Dunkin' Donuts, so I figured I'd give you even more of an opportunity to make fun of me in this video. And Emmett, why don't you show the people what you're drinking? Yeah, he's lucky to still have a job after that. I sort of lied, Emmett. I told him that these were small changes. This is technically a big change. Even you though liar. It's a, I, <laughs> even though it's a small thing. This first change is probably something that almost every one of you is doing currently. You're using the tent stakes that came with your tent. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, tent manufacturers, really focus on tent manufacturing. And then sometimes they will throw in tent stakes and other times they won't. And almost every single time, as a matter of fact, every tent that I own, I change out the tent stakes in them because they are not good enough. They're not sufficient for where I take them. So this is an example. This is one from Big Agnes, well-known, highly respected tent manufacturer. And they give these really terrible <laughs> aluminum stakes with their extremely expensive tents. I can't tell you how many of these have bent and come out of the ground when I was in situations that were windy and stormy. And the temptation is to go out and make your backpacking system lighter, right? So if you end up tossing this away, a lot of guys will go out and buy something like this. This is a titanium shepherd's hook steak. And I bought this because it weighs next to nothing. I think it's like less than 10 grams and it is horrible. These bend, they slip out of the ground. This is like putting a toothpick in the ground. I've even tried carbon fiber steaks. Also terrible, every one I've ever used. Uh, they're very brittle, very lightweight, so that's nice, but they're also very smooth, so they will slip in and out of the ground very easily. I do not recommend these as well. I went out and I finally picked up my favorite steak of all time, which is the only steak that I use for every situation, every season, even winter, is the MSR Groundhog Steak. These are still very lightweight. They're a high grade aluminum, obviously heavier than titanium and carbon fiber, but they're extremely strong. I've only had one ever bend on me, ever. But I've even had people comment on these steaks and say, Dan, I found other steaks that are just as awesome and they look identical and they're not. This is a imitation MSR groundhog steak that came with a tent that I purchased. And this, one of these steaks actually snapped in half when I was out there. I threw it in the garbage, obviously. Total garbage. Don't buy imitations. These are only 25 bucks. Pick them up, strong, safe. We'll keep your tent grounded. See what I did there? Wait, how come you're wearing hiking clothes and we're just in your backyard? Bro. Why well, you gotta wrap me out like that? I'm just trying to look the part. It's a hiking backpacking channel. Hello. All right, this next one um, is the only other one that's gonna actually cost you a couple bucks. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's still under 25 bucks, well worth it. And that's using a app to help you navigate while you're on trail rather than using a map or a compass. Although you should still take a map and compass with you as a backup, just kind of keep it in your backpack. I like using an app when I'm hiking because it's actually like using a GPS while you're driving. It just doesn't call out the directions to you, but it will literally tell you and point you in the right direction. It'll even pinpoint where you're at on trail to even see you at like a fork in the trail. And you can sort of aim your phone like this and see exactly which direction you could go. Not only that, but an app on your phone uh, will also show you things on trail that you may or may not know were there, like water sources or campsites or other waypoints like scenic outlooks and things like that. And it will even show you like terrain. So that way you know uh, how difficult the next mile or two might be. The app that I like to use is called Onyx Backcountry. I personally think it's the best app out there for that. I've been using this app for a very, very long time. Because I use Onyx so much, they gave me a code for you. 
that will save you, I think it's like 20%. So it brings the price down to like 23 bucks or so for the year. Click the link in the description, download the app. They even have a free trial. You don't even have to pay for it at first. So you can use the free trial for like 30 days to see if you even like it. So an app for your phone, huge upgrade, will make a big difference for all of your backpacking trips and even just day hikes. Ah? Uh, no? What was that? No. Comment below and somebody educate him on Mr. Rogers, please. All right, another seemingly insignificant uh, gear change is just using shoes that you already own at home. One of the biggest temptations and one of the biggest mistakes actually that I see new backpackers and hikers make is that they will literally run out to the store like the day they're going on a backpacking trip. I see it all the time and they will buy brand new shoes because while well, they're afraid maybe their feet are gonna get wet or they're not gonna have good grip or anything like that. And then they use those brand new shoes out on trail, uh, not even broken in and they're miserable because now they've got blisters because that shoe wasn't broken. They didn't test it out somewhere. So I would say, do not buy new shoes for your backpacking trip. Use shoes that you already own at home. Just make sure, really, the only prerequisite is that it's got good tread on it. Now these ones I've had, I've been using on many, many backpacking trips. These are almost time to purchase new ones. As a matter of fact, I probably will buy new ones for this next trip because I was slipping on rocks. Emmett will verify. He was. Yes, many times as I was hiking. So make sure that it does have good tread on it don't spend the money on new shoes. Use the shoes you've already got at home. Even if they're not waterproof, you will be fine. Your feet will dry out, I promise you. And it would be better than you having blisters while you're hiking. Another small gear change that you can make that's seemingly small, but will make significant changes for you. And a lot of you guys may or may not like this, but that's okay, um, is swap out your water bladder for a plastic water bottle. A couple big reasons for this that I think are really important. One, this is extremely lightweight. One concern you might have with a plastic water bottle is that it's plastic and it's gonna be bad for what we do out there, but this particular brand made by Smart Water is an extremely durable water bottle. I know people personally who have taken this water bottle out on the Appalachian Trail for over 2,000 miles and still had the same water bottle when they were done because you can just refill this thing. It's kind of like a odd plastic bomb proof bottle. <laughs> but another great thing about this is that it's so much easier to refill than your water bladder. Your water bladder is deep down inside of your backpack, which makes it difficult to get out because you gotta pull everything out of your backpack in most situations. Cleaning your water bladder is also difficult if you're wanting to put fresh water in it constantly. This one, all you do is gonna filter directly into this water bottle with your water filter, so you've always got clean water in it, or you can even use one of these as like a dirty water bottle and then attach your filter directly to the top of this water bottle and drink out of it that way. So, small change, but it will make a significant difference for you. Another small change, big difference, bring less clothing with you on your hikes. I bring a lot of brand new backpackers backpacking with me. I mean, literally guys that have never ever done it before. So their first trip is with me. And when I get the question from them, uh, how much clothes should I bring? And I tell them that the only clothing that I pack inside of my backpack, besides an extra jacket and rain jacket, is maybe one pair of socks. The look on their face is usually complete disgust. Like, they cannot believe that that's all I'm bringing. Like, you don't change clothes while you're out there? Like, are you kidding me? One extra days of clothing is gonna weigh about a pound and a half. So you're talking, you know, maybe a pair of underwear, an extra pair of shorts, maybe a shirt, about a pound and a half. That's a lot of weight, especially if you're gonna bring that every day you go out. So if you go out for a three, four day hike, that's a lot of extra weight that you're gonna have in your backpack. Now, all these people that I've brought that still brought extra clothes, even though I told them not to because they thought it was so disgusting, I can tell you that none of them changed their clothes when they were out there. They kept on the same clothes that they wore the first day and the second day because they realized that they were just gonna stink and they were gonna smell no matter what. Now, if you want to keep clean while you're out there, all you gotta do is find a river or a lake or something. You can just jump in with that clothes on you if it's warm enough or you could take them off when obviously nobody's looking except for maybe the bears, you know what I'm saying? And you can just rinse them off and wash them off that, that way and dry them out. So it's really not a big deal. It will save a ton of weight, 
small change, big difference. All right, next small change, big difference, is something that I actually told Emmett that if he doesn't do on this next backpacking trip, he's gonna regret it. What did I tell you? Bring trekking poles. Bring trekking poles. Even if you don't think you're gonna use them or if you think they're super nerdy, bring trekking poles. Why do you wanna bring trekking poles? You just bring one. You can just bring one if you don't wanna bring two. Uh, why do you wanna bring trekking poles? Many, many reasons. I'll just give you a couple. First off, when you're using trekking poles, it will take the weight off of your back if you have a heavy backpack. Also, being able to get uphill is much easier. And then going downhill is much easier as well. And if you slip and fall, you can usually stop yourself with trekking poles. And a great example is on my last trip with my shoes wearing out, these saved me from falling many times. Did they not? They did. They did, yes. Like I was like, holy cow, trekking poles have done it again. If you're looking for a really good pair of trekking poles, I've only used these ones once. They did the job, but uh, they got sent to me by Fizen. These are only five ounces a piece, Emmett. Five ounces a piece, and these are like 70 bucks-ish on Amazon. Uh, Italian company, they say that they are the world's lightest <laughs> trekking poles. Aluminum, because I've got lighter ones than this, so this must be talking about, these are aluminum, twist lock. Anyway, trekking poles, small change, huge, huge difference. If you like this video, you're probably going to like this video. Click right here, right over here, if you wanna know how to lose six to eight pounds not on your body, but out of your backpack, and you'll be able to see me, what I look like without a hat. And click this video right here that YouTube recommends to you and thinks that you're really gonna like. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Get that out of here. <laughs>